So I started this food journey, and I started this film, and uh, I got to California, and I opened up my first community supported agriculture box, and I reached in there, and I took this thing out, and I said, what is this? I'm 25 years old. What is this? This isn't lettuce. It's not collard greens. What is this? So I went around and I asked, and I found out this was kale. It's kale. Wow. This is great. <laughs> so then I started taking my personal journey, and it wasn't until I came to D.C. and Watkins Elementary that I realized what I was doing wasn't the right thing to do. It was a personal journey. I was changing my health, my behavior, but that's not what this is about. This is about a community. So I got to Watkins Elementary, and I met this girl, she's a third grader, and I said, what is your favorite vegetable? And she looks up at me, she's like, kale. <laughs> Third grade girl, and it was kale. So that's when it clicked. I had my aha moment. This is not my journey. This is our journey. And little did you realize when you walked in this room tonight, you joined our community. And whether or not you like the movie, you have responsibilities and obligations now. So whatever your standards are, you got to raise the bar. So I'm very sorry there wasn't a disclaimer at the beginning of the film. So on that, I'd like to bring up. Uh, Bernie Prince, who is with Fresh Farm Markets. You guys also should know her. Uh, so yeah, we'd love to take some questions um, on anything, and especially local DC stuff. Uh, I want to tell you that Bernie and Ann, who is the other woman from Fresh Farm Markets, are receiving the Washington Green Award in May of this year for their work. It's been nearly two years since we shot in D.C., and since then, Watkins has done enormous, amazing things. So the Food Prints uh, program has grown, and the, the school garden has been, now it's fenced in, and it's bigger, and it's secure, and they have a food lab and a kitchen to teach these courses. So, uh, and that was done on Kickstarter, so they raised a bunch of money from the community, so thank you for that, too. I was worried when we didn't see the film come out last year, and I said that to you in an email in January. Um, it was just such a thrill to be part of this and to know that you went to watch it. I feel like I won the Academy Award when I see it. <laughs> <laughs> and Jennifer and Barbara out there because it's such a great program, and I'm just so happy that you filmed that and captured that. And you need to come back and see the changes, but just really terrific. Yeah, there's and an interview that we trust too. All of you who also participate in farmers markets in the D.C. area, we started the first fresh farm market in the whole neighborhood in 1997. It's our 15th year anniversary. Those of you who are eating fresh, healthy food, and we're thrilled by that. I would just say that the, the walk-ins where I'm teaching, the program is fully funded by Fresh Farm Markets, and it's because of their support that we're able to have this program in our school. So, it's just amazing, just amazing. So, yeah, so there's a microphone there, and I know you guys are shy at first, and there's one over there, too. Um, yeah, where you can just yell it out, but there are mics if you're close, but please, sir. What are the prospects for local farming in Minnesota and the middle of the There are a lot, actually. I mean, uh, there's a lot of indoor, and you know, you're going to have to compromise on something to grow in Minnesota in the wintertime. So either you're going to have UV lights, you're going to have poop houses, you're going to be growing aquaponics or hydroponics, which are just going to be not in soil and water and dense environments with lights. Um, but it's possible, you know. But you're going to eat a lot of potatoes and a lot of canned produce from the summer before. I have a daughter in Montana who reports the farmer's markets there every Saturday. So they're still doing it there. They have start growing season, but they're still eating local food. Sir? Have you been in touch with the cafeteria man? <laughs> yes, person. actually. You have been. Yeah, just now, recently. It's a very impressive program. Yes, uh, and if you guys don't know, it screened at the very beginning, 
Um, and that film also just recently came out. It's about uh, a man, a cafeteria man, who was in Baltimore and sort of. Uh, and the point is, he's encouraging local farming as the source of the food that they have in the Baltimore school system. They have 80,000 students. So this should be a process that Washington can figure out how to do. It. Absolutely. Okay, I'd, I'd like to put in a plug because you asked about local farming. We have a very special farm in Montgomery County, Nick's Organic Farm. It is an organic seed bank that the entire region depends on for getting its organic soy and corn seeds. And it's under threat right now because our county executive, in his lack of wisdom, is trying to turn it into yet more soccer fields. We're trying very hard to do everything we can to save this organic farm. So if you have a moment, go onto the internet and type in Nick's Organic Farm, farm or savenixfarm.org and write to our county executive to try to save this exceptional keystone small enterprise. For and for education. And I'd also like to say in response to the question about Minnesota, I've got backyard vegetables and we've been eating arugula and mizuna right through the winter. If it's not a three season thing anymore. We're living organically four seasons a year. Thank you. And um, so she brought up an excellent point, though, which was the website. So the website and the movement and the community were just building. Needless to say, this took two and a half years to make because we were, I would say, I'll say underfunded, but really not funded um, to actually make the film. And as a result, it takes a little bit more support to continue to grow the campaign. This is supposed to be the start of the conversation so that you're all supposed to take it to your community. Um, I spent the morning on the Hill today uh, talking with Senate staffers about the farm bill that's going on right now, which we like to call the food bill. And so you can find a lot more information on our website. And as it grows, you'll find even more information. So Nick's Organics will hopefully will chat, and hopefully there'll be more information about that as well. So um, I would love to hear from you guys, um, you know, what you want to see, and you know, and some other questions that you have that this raises, because I know. A lot of people aren't going to agree with everything. It sounds like you have a question. Sir. <laughs> I do have a question. Uh, first of all, congratulations on the film. It's a great message and a great film. Um, my question was, in the part about the organic, the local organic uh, farmers market, um, which uh, made me think about sort of maybe sort of a naive question, but why? It seems to me, and I guess this is sort of anecdotal. It seems to me that the vegetables and the uh, fruits are more expensive than they are at the grocery store. Um, and I wonder why that would be, because it seems that if it's local and cutting out the middleman, it should be cheaper, but it always seems to me that they're more expensive, so maybe I'm wrong. Maybe not much I think we will both have a quick response. First of all, okay. it probably depends which one you're going to. Yeah. So depending upon what part of the city you are, it might be more expensive. But you also need to keep in mind that the food that you're buying at the grocery store that's very cheap is made very cheaply. And it's probably not made in soil that is really conducive for growing. And so the farmers that are bringing it in are growing in a much smaller way, in a much less mechanized way, which means a lot less carbon going into the atmosphere. And with a lot more, you know, love. So I think you could taste the difference. What are the mechanisms that you want to use to promote this? And will you want to use a sort of like, um, to track the follow-up the follow and the feedback um, and sort of just like the, the reaction that people are having as far as like, I think, basically I'm trying to say, I think you should do something to sort of chronicle um, people seeing it and actually doing something about it to sort of support them and, you know, give them resources. Thank you. So the first question is about Will Allen. If you guys don't know who he, who he is, he's uh, based in Detroit with uh, a company he started called Growing Power. And the reason we didn't speak to Will Allen is the same reason we didn't speak to Michael Pollan or Alice Waters. It wasn't that they weren't doing tremendous work. In fact, they are the forefathers of the movement and the figureheads of the movement. And what I wanted to show people was that there are a lot of other voices out there, and there are a lot of other models that are being replicated that you haven't seen yet. So that's why. But I think what he's doing is great. And there have been several films. If you haven't seen the film Fresh, he's one of the, the main characters in that documentary. As for the outreach and the campaign, yes, that is fundamental. That is the most fundamental. Um, we can monetize this right away by selling it, and you can watch it on your computer, and you will do nothing. So we're going to organize screens, hopefully free screens, that people can come to and they can be part of a conversation. And that is the idea. 
Thank you. Uh, I said you. Me too. <laughs> um, so this is a of our third. Um, we're in the middle of our third year, and we're really lucky to have some more supportive administrators who really like having the program at the school. We're, it's a big elementary school. We have over 500 students, and right now we work each year with a little over 300 of them, all our first, third, and fourth graders. And the reason that we've been able to stay there and be successful is that we are not only having to do the kids spend time gardening and working in the garden and cooking and eating, but I also am teaching their science and social studies standards through these experiences they have in the food lab. And last spring we raised money to convert an empty classroom to a lab, um, which is essentially a kitchen on one side and a wall of shelves with row lights on the other side. So, you know, the kids come up, they spend, they each classroom, the 15 classes that participate, they spend at least two hours a month, sometimes more, in a long chunk of time, so either their whole morning or the whole afternoon. And they work in the garden, they cook, they eat, and then they learn either about plant biology for one grade, another grade studying nutrition, and another grade is studying how foods came to this country, how cuisine is happened, they're studying ecosystems. So. <laughs> That's what we're working on right now. There's a, a lot is going on in DC with school food right now. Um, the, the director of school food service has proposed that DC take over the school food production in-house and use local foods and produce higher quality food and that they expand some pilot programs they've had in the city like DC Central Kitchen and Revolution Foods that have been really successful. Um, and the chancellor has said no. And I think she has reasons for that, and he has reasons for suggesting this. So there's a lot going on right now, and it's something that would be good to make your voice heard on, because the food that's at our school is not what we'd like to see, and we're, we're really trying to get that change. I teach in a D.C. public school, and so I was surprised, maybe it's because it's two years ago, um, to hear that they said the foods were not fresh and not healthy, because I know that my kids complain all the time about how Michelle Obama has made them eat all these healthy foods. I was also just surprised no mention of Michelle Obama because I know that she's definitely um, championing, champion, championing this same. Well, let's move campaign is great. And we actually were in touch with the White House when we shot this film. And just like the USDA, they had no comment. <laughs> but um, the demand for organic is skyrocketing. And although it represents 1%, it's shown that people are worried, and everyone wants a quick fix. That's why people want to do the label. When I started this film, the two editors I worked with were like, just make it good or bad, dude. It's like, man, yeah, it's not. It's much more complicated. It's much more of a gray area, but people want it to be simple. And so the demand has gone up, the distribution's gone up, and thus the big farm has gone up. You know, it's been scaled up and organic because we're feeding, you know, 310 million people. <laughs> There's a lot of baby making. <laughs> so I think the, the best way to deal with it is to look for these new hybrid models. Uh, I've gone, I went across the country, and there are so many young people that want to be farmers. There's, a, there's an organization called Food Corps based in New York, and they're, they're partnering with AmeriCorps, and they have a harder acceptance rate than Harvard. There are more young people that want to get in that program, and that's an apprenticeship. That's an apprenticeship where you uh, you work for a year without getting paid. And so, let's think about new models. You know, let's think about next year, next to your sink in your kitchen. Let's think about your balcony. Let's think about rooftops. We all live in cities. Why aren't we growing on the roof? This is ridiculous. It gets the most sun. It gets the most water. There aren't insects up there. You can charge a premium. So I, I think that th these new models are, are coming out, and, and there is no way to deal with big ag. We still need to eat, although a lot of it does go to subsidized commodities. So thanks again. Um, I love you.